Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tierno the Lessers of Europe. As I'm sure you know by now, of course. Uh, us being in like what, episode 8 of this? Um, but as you know, I'm probably Mr. Mocha Lover. And uh, we got a new paradigm shift. Lee Chun went on to lunch break from his job to take a look at the skyline of Koshu. The sky was clear for once, and the smog didn't obscure all his vision as it did 99% of the time. Looking at their their skyline. He knows it's clearly different from the last time he looked around. New skyscrapers and office buildings surrounding him, and bamboo scaffolding abound him. <clears throat> I knew the role of the new chief executive. There was more talk of people, the same people who could fill the offices. John thought striking a rich by working for Chung Kong, so in your go the government. New Zuzi incorporations were being established, he had heard, usually with a working relationship with Sonia Chung Kong, the two new giants of Guangdong. Looking back down to the street, he saw masses of smartly dressed people openly speaking Cantonese in a way they'd not been able to since the thirties. That pleased him. What rankled him, however, was an insistent bragging about their recent business plans and making fun of Chung himself for being dressed like a laborer, which mind you, he was. It stung, John thought. As an educated man's game, Sony and Chung Kong's man game, and Lee Chung was neither. That shut him out of the corridors of privilege and power, but he had more money now than he'd ever had before him, and he could not help but feel proud of the advancement of his fellow native Chinese and even the Zhu Jim. Perhaps Chun thought. Even Hey or Why could even join the ranks of newly empowered business people he saw. With that thought in mind, he dug in, as we were continuing to maintain our solvency. Our solvency. And then we could do our dues with the Japanese, while focusing on the Japanese expatriate community of Guangdong, or open the auctions. Which would get us more money, but honestly, we're probably going to go with our debts with the Zhujin. There still remains issues of resolving the leftover insolvencies from the Asia crisis. These firms that came into the state receivership during the crisis remain on the, our books. So only these after willing buyers will provide a quick injection of funds into Guangdong's coffers, but more importantly, we sell these valuable assets to the Zhujin businessmen of Guangdong. We can kickstart the foundations of the local economy, though undoubtedly far, far stronger than those tied to foreign capital. It's all about getting more uh, support. Lots and lots and lots of more support. Also, I didn't talk, say this, but like, oh, we have over 30 billion now in GDP, which is great, 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 great. And the CV2000 BTR. Yeah, as a home television sets become more common in Guangdong and the sphere as a whole, people become more familiar with a very modern frustration. Imagine your favorite TV show, or favorite show. Your boss is late, you have to work overtime, you just overslept, and now you have to scout the TV guide hoping to catch a rerun. <laughs> Sony plans to make that thing of the past, a new CV2000 VTR, once attached to your TV, can be set to record a certain channel at a certain time for up to an hour. The contents of the broadcast will be encoded onto a strip of magnetic tape, which the VTR can then play back at any time the user chooses, allowing viewers to make sure they never miss their favorite programs. The device has already drawn concern from major, several major film studios, who worry that people will record TV broadcasts of movies and sell them on the black market. They've even recorded an appropriately alarmist phrase, video piracy, nevertheless. The general public seems eager for it to be able to watch their favorite shows at a time of their choosing. Don't be a prisoner of the programming schedule anymore. So, uh, product cycle reaching 89%, which is great. You know, it could be better, of course, but with 115% profit profitability, we get one more Sony seat as well as one more Chung Kong seat. Then we get the product cycle, 2.2.5% real GDP growth, six, over 6% 6 GDP growth, 1.278 billion, which is actually not bad overall. And because we did Italy, or Italy, we get the following additional effects. We get the event Idiot Box. Interesting. That's actually really interesting. One crisis ends. Morita Akeo stared at the newspaper. The moment he entered his office in the morning, the secretary handed him the paper to him and told him to look it over in his office. Good news, she called. When he settled into the office and looked it over, he saw the words he had been waiting for. Long Yong killed in action, and the last remnants of the Western insurrection had been taken up by the Chinese soldiers. One nightmare release was over. The chief executive sighed. This would be more, there would be more to say, of course, and more to do in China. It's, in its current state, it would never promise the kind of complete stability that the emperor always asked of him, and even its loyalty might someday be called into question. But these would be internal problems. As a rule, they were not things of which would harm Guang the most. Morita Akeo turned back to his work. For now, the time had come to focus inward once more. Guangdong had already more than enough enemies as is. Oh. Uh, Song Ji Hing Lung. Li Keqing had just finished the hard work of surveying a new office tower he was building in Koshu for the ever burgeoning financial and real estate empire. I was very happy with the way things were turning out. <clears throat> Li noted that with a smile, while well, it was a matter of time before all of Guangdong would be eating out of his hands. First, with his friend Morita's approval, he got in countless sweetheart deals from the government. He and Morita had started from the very bottom, we did it to the top, and are now so safe that nothing could ever throw them again. Or so we may think. <laughs> Lee looked around and saw a regular laborer, sitting down at lunch and staring up at a new building Lee was building. He was reminded of himself uh, 20 years back, a poor factory owner, struggling to get by with the limited education he had, dreaming of something more. He remembered his and Morita's first meeting on the streets of Koshu, now with, how with hard work and harder study. They clawed himself up to the heightness of greatness. Look at the laborer again. He wondered if the man would be tomorrow's next tycoon. If that was the case, then Lee vowed that he would help him and begin by hiring him first. It was his duty, Lee thought, the duty as a successful and superior businessman to help those not as fortunate as him. Not everyone was a competitor, he could help them out of the goodness of his heart, and in turn, surely they would help him too. With that thought, he went back to work. Idiot Box. 
Lorenzo thought he might have made the, made the smartest purchase of his life. When Sony launched a new 5-inch TV in Italy, he'd been there on the first day to pick one up for his limousine. Lorenzo's wife had balked at the price, but he knew a little entertainment would make the drives go to, go to work much uh, farther or faster. His guests were particularly impressed, and the three expensively dressed businessmen gazed at the technological marvel before them like children. He was playing some soap opera. Lorenzo didn't watch them himself, but his compatriots were enthralled. So what do you think? One of the men, a balding fellow named Andrea, responded, It's ingenious without taking his eyes off the TV. I meant with a new arrangement for oil exploration rights. Oh, the other, another of the men looked at him confused. Oh, is that what we were talking about? Yet more distractions. We've exhausted special opportunities for this market. The market's product profitability would increase by 5%. Interesting. 1946, part 1. The men in the cocky colored uniforms returned to the village. An entourage of sharply dressed, bestuited businessmen accompanied them. The villagers stood and watched as they knocked on the headman's door. Lamb stood among them, softly elbowing his way toward them. Headman emerged from his home. The interpreter for the Japanese group began. Hello, he said. We've come to discuss business terms. Can I come in? Can we come in? The spring sun cast beaded down shadows on the interpreter's brows, streaming down. No, the headman said. Whatever you gotta say, you can say it here. The headman spat at the shoes of the business entourage. When the soldiers stepped forward to strike, one of those besuited uh, sleeves halted the fender in his tracks. He spoke, prompting the interpreter to continue. No, to be violent, I fear, he said. The woman coming here making an open offer to every one of your... <clears throat> tra uh, the interpreter paused, trying to find the right word. Peasants, farmers, fishermen. The headman item. Oh, out with it. At a signal from the businessman, the interpreter turned to the crowd. We, he said, raising his voice, we wish to offer a business proposition. The senior village and the poverty in which it dwells and is in our hands to offer a solution. We'll provide food, work tools, in exchange for a few of your fine young men, to whom we'll grant employment in the reconstruction of the province. Is this acceptable? I was quiet for a long instant. Then the villager threw an egg at the interpreter. Jeers, insults, and laughter broke out as a platoon of men formed a circle to protect the entourage. They pushed their way through the crowd, rifles barred with uh, uh, bayonets and furrowed. Just before they stepped off the village gates, Lamb strode forward and shouted, Wait! Another silence. I'll go, he said, voice shaking. He could feel the burning eyes of his relatives on him. I'll go, he said louder. The Japanese took him in as a rancor and clamor raged behind, uh, again behind him. When the winds blow eastward, is it wrong for the ships to sail there within? Our debts with them. Ooh, also, since we're here, um. I do want to do this one. Keep accelerating it. And then we'll focus more on corruption, because we really do need to focus more on corruption. You know, maybe I should have not done that one. We have only 43 seats, which sucks, but... So with this one, we add 25% of Sony, and 25% of Chong Kong seats, and 10% more. Um, which actually is not bad. Quarter to quarter. quarter. Well, we could really use more quarter. We might get more, actually. It won't be enough. It'll be close. But contracts for sale. <coughs> One of the greater resources available to the government is the sheer amount of land available as a public asset, which we can sell on parcels to willing corporate bidders looking to participate in public construction and industrial development projects. There's far more land the government can feasibly develop on its own, but the private sector can certainly provide a helping hand for a price. Uh, really, we have no interest in a free-for-all building war that will lock out the general public from enjoying the fruits of state development. We'll invite companies to bid on sets of contracts for private, uh, public-private partnership projects. Well, this will likely be a less rapid way to raise funds for the government, but at least we can direct the flow of investment and project uh, pr practices to reduce any harm to the local Chinese and Zhujian populace. A quick reboot. The chief executive position in Guangdong is a busy one, with constant meetings to attend, reports to sort through, and orders to be authorized on most days, a reporter talking on the TV. The conversation in the hallway surrounding his office and the headlines of the daily paper were nothing more than just simple distractions, but Morita Akeo noticed one country's name being said all across all three mediums of the past week, Colombia. As he began asking his closest advisors about Colombia, how had there been a stalemate for years, suddenly erupting into wide-scale conflict? How the mainland government was expected to support one of the factions fighting the conflict? How the IJA and the IJN were constantly complaining about the outdated equipment? And just like that, he suddenly remembered one of Suzuki's old projects that had been defunct for a while now. The project testing research group sounded like an ordinary research and development team from one of the Guangdong's many companies, but was instead a weapons development team working in tandem with the IJA and IJM to ensure that the Japanese military was always one step ahead of its adversaries. Companies would submit a prototype weapon design to the PTRG, and then the Army and Navy would actually go out and test the prototypes. The group had been put on the back burner since the Yasuda crisis, but there were tens of dozens of project ideas that had been considered after Indonesia. The chief executive would spend the rest of the afternoon pitching the idea again to his, to his contacts in the Army and Navy, who were excited to hear the program was being restarted. They always stressed their need for more reliable, more effective equipment, and if one of Guangdong's companies could provide it, the profits would make the other product launches look like failures. For Morita, for Morita Akeo, failure was never an option for surviving the Guangdong, and the PTRG would be no exception to that rule. One country's loss is another's game. It's time to subsidize our experimental SPART project for advanced field testing. Oh, ready to send to be Columbia. Nice! Well, that's really cool. Type 32 self propelled artillery. <laughs> this is awesome, I love it. The matter of the Yasuda Remnants. Morita Akeo was overseeing a rather lively cabinet discussion, of course. The matter at hand was the other day, 
was the issue of the remaining assets of the sordid failed companies. Yasuda, not at least among them, which had been taken over by the government during the recent Yasuda collapse, all these dead weight assets were nothing more or less than a milestone for the government. It was generally agreed that they had to be sold. They all agreed on the benefits, too. It would be get expenses off the books and would make some money. The point of the debate, therefore, was who the assets should be sold to. Stanley Ho, his final secretary, argued that the contract should be offered to Zushim. As well as you know, Chief Executive, there are countless creative people out there that have been willing to make something out of nothing. Even better is the fact that not a single one of these people is tied to existing interests that will wring every single ounce of profitability in it for their own benefit. Matsushita Masaharu, the external secretary, shook his head in disagreement. What Mr. Ho is saying is well and good, Mr. Chief Executive, but the Japanese are far safer choice than the Zushim. They have not yet been able to establish themselves properly in reality, but the Japanese can offer economies of scale, and they have the capital to put the projects to use. More importantly, their favor will be invaluable to you in your future endeavors. Marita rubbed his chin, they both had good points, and they'd have to think about it before reaching a final decision. The decision, of course, was ultimately his. There you go. Um, Takeda Goro. So... I think we support. Is it the small one? This guy. Hopefully we don't lose them before they die, but you know, whatever. Um So which one? So fighting the jungles, mountain operations, river crossings, equipment as part of a battle plan. Oh, you can actually hover over this. Biden rainy, rainy, stormy conditions. Okay, ah, that's good. So plus twenty freaking six percent growth. My God, that's so good. No amendments, huh? Streamlines bankers should be resolution procedures to avoid disastrous economic collapses. Well, that'd be nice. Now we get a vote. Hopefully, we can do okay here. Oh, man, we're, that's so much. I mean, I want to help poverty out because it's looking really bad now. But you know, whatever. There's not really much we can do about that. There you go. Hey, how's it going? It's fine. So what is this template like? 14 combo width, 43 and a half armor, mostly motorized, with some PTR2 experimental Spart. I love Sparts. Oh, looking pretty good. The Kalomi Command. They've done it again, haven't they, Takashima? Tell me it isn't true. Takashima, Consul General of Japan and the state of Guangdong, have nothing but to offer but a sigh. Yeah, they've done it again, General. Nagano said within his hands and said, Spill it out then. What nonsense have they scribbled up there this time? <clears throat> As an inter interlocutor sighed and read it out loud. The state of Guangdong has in the interest of supporting the strategic goals of the Imperial Japanese Army. The government of the Great Japanese Empire declared the deployment of a research. Uh, a volunteer research division to the Colombian Civil War. At that, the general said, I'm just fist on the table. Infuriating. Imperial Japanese Army soldiers, my soldiers, are once again going, going to be sent in a fight in a foreign war. A war of choice uh, for us. Without the equipment tried and tested for the cause. The, the, the guinea pigs for scientists who don't understand a single darn word of why they fight. The consul general said, and Nagano continued, and I'm supposed to look these men in the eyes or rivals break down on them day in, day out, as the weapons and supplies prove all more unreliable because some thrice darned egghead scientists made them know and without knowing how real combat works, and tell them they're doing the right thing. And all they're really doing is serving the chief executives. Money grew up in interest, but now it's what's crescendoed, crescendoed into a shell. I hate this, Takashima. I hate this so much. Um, honestly, uh, let's meet Chinese representatives? We could. What else can we do with our 30 political power? Wait, it's 25. You know what? I'm going to do this one. Because uh, one of the comments from yesterday said we should try it. Ooh, that's not bad, too. But I want to lower our... Chinese support. You know, that's actually pretty high. More growth. Increases Chinese population. That wouldn't be bad either. That's not bad too. But we're not focused on growth. Growth is good and all. Like, but we have already a lot. I want to at least do... We can be Chinese representatives. We'll see what happens um, with that one. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't be good. And then maybe we'll do this one too. Or we're going to get radical here. And then we can start actually and stop doing the one I always choose for more political power. We can choose stuff for the police, maybe? Ooh. I'm not going to increase Chinese support anymore. Um, can choose about 1.25%, 1.5%. Yeah, increase the police presence, maybe? I know I've lowered it quite a bit throughout this campaign. Many of you said to stop doing that, so we're going to stop doing that. Increase by 1.5% might be really good, especially here. Even though you do get more influence from every single group, which is pretty nice. If anything, I want to lower this groups. So, Tried's not terrible. It's Koshu. Yeah, it'd probably be good to start doing that from here on out. Uh, yeah. Or we just start lowering their influence here too. Raid their stuff. Decreases control. Decreases control. Decreases x back control. Oh, so it decreases Yakuza control. Increases Triad control, but also increases police control. 
and protects triads in Koshu, decreases police by 1.25%, decreases the Kenpai tie, as well as Yakuza. Interesting. Or just gets just more straight up control. Natachia is obstinate. <clears throat> it was not the Consul General who exited the Consul General's office, much to Morita Akeo's surprise. Nor was the negotiator a secretary of some fashion or even a diplomat at all. Instead, a short uh, man in a military guard with a receding hairline and photo loosely held in one hand now regarded the chief executive the same way in which you might regard a gum. Or that a gun sucked with a shoe, by all means, it was generally unassuming. The generic version of any military man, but it was look, that look alone which Mor told Mor Morita Akeo okay, that today was rapidly spinning up course. Good afternoon, I'm Attaché Wang Jingzhu of the Chinese delegation of Guangdong. The Consul General of Portugal cannot make his meeting today, so I shall make it take his place, as I will in any absence of us from here on out. It's a pleasure, General. Morita Akeo okay, rose to shake his hand, but his extended arm had no response. Instead, Attaché glanced at the gesture, resoundingly ignored it, and read his photo to read it from him. Lieutenant General, but call me attaché. I've been constructed or instructed to forward anything noteworthy to the Consul General that comes from our discussion now. He squinted to read the agenda in his hand. Terror of harmonization, a quiet snort. Not that I expect anything noteworthy from this meeting in the first place. Morita uh, Akeo could only regard his new companion was standing in silence. No, he realized it was not going to be a productive day. At least the other man knows how to speak. Field Report CS1. The following is a log of all incidents involving the experimental equipment that's assigned to the field team 14 slash 30900 hours. Uh, CA-1 begins a fire support mission, uh, firing on grid K-6. 21 rounds are fired across 15 minutes before this autoloader jams. CA-1 then spends an hour attempting to fix the autoloader before realizing that they are missing critical parts that are necessary to complete the repair. CA-1 CA returns to base. 15 slash 3, 1400 hours. CA-1 completes repair at the FOB. Uh, second SBG is added to CA-1 to increase combat effectiveness. Designated CA-2. Team is able to make its way across mountainous terrain. Uh, in grid D2 before stopping in grid D4, however. <clears throat> Ten minutes in, the CA1 notices a drop in Ron Velocity while observers reporting that Rons are falling short in the grid K3, killing 11 friendlies. Oh god. CA1 breaks off back to base while CA2 continues to fire for another 30 minutes. Upon return to base, CA1 notices that the protective coating in the barrels of the gun are melting and saws a new barrel. Uh, 17 slash 3, 0800. CA2 is sent to grid E1, but it's spotted by enemy air reconnaissance without all in route. <coughs> Uh, a helicopter unit likely belonging to Redactum attacks CA2 with a small arms fire, although the helicopter unit misses all anti vehicle munitions. A rifle fires enough to penetrate the platform, and a bullet likely reaches either the ammo belt or the gas tank, and CA2 is lost. IJ unit, blank or redacted. Its task is to ensure that enemy does not recover the wreckage. <coughs> Final recommendation improve armor rating, replace barrel coating, ensure all crews have necessary parts to maintain repairs. Rate of fire is well above cur uh, current IJ SPG, so design can be solved, just survivability and reliability can be improved. Report received. Also, they did capitulate these guys over here too. Um, also, we just like just like barrel stuff these guys as much as we possibly can. That still helps us out, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Um, we'll make sure we try to win as much as possible though. Uh, so go and hold for now. Uh, we'll see, because right now we care about carry out mountainous operations, fire and raining or storm equipment conditions, as well as carry out river crossing for the outsiders. <coughs> Even if Chief Executive Morita and Li Kishin promised the world to Guangdong Zhujin community, the real power dictated and not, not everyone got everything they wanted. Horse trading favors and back uh, scratching these with time honored traditions and the rise of Guangdong's two most prominent Zhujin hardly changed that. <clears throat> As the months following Murti's inauguration, Chief Executive blurred in her ears. Some found that the rising tide did not lift all boats. Former rivals, jilted spires of those ordinary men and women simply unlucky enough to follow outside the government's programs. They saw the rise of Sun Chung Kong as their star eclipsing all else, and saw themselves falling further in the shadows. But slowly over the course of interminable, interminable seasons, they slided and ignored, found each other. In scattered apartments and repurposed conference rooms, a businessman shut out of government contracts, a bureaucrat denied a promotion, a factory worker ineligible for assistance. Those of Sony Chung Kong had forgotten by ignorance or by design, found they're not alone in their disappointment with the broken promises. They looked out for each other where nobody else would, an interview for those recently unemployed, referrals of trusted suppliers for those facing a profit squeeze, a shelter for those facing eviction. Just as Marita and Lee had once done, a fledgling ecosystem of Zhujian blossomed in the shadow of the new times of industry, styled themselves as the Lord's Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen, and pride in their defiance. So in Chiang Kong paid them little heed. Why should they? They had more pressing business to, to attend to. Every system has its, con has its cracks, but now we're doing contracts for sale, of course. <clears throat> um, which I think I read earlier, too. Yeah. <laughs> so if you read this again, please go ahead. I think I read this one earlier. Maybe I did. Oh. I'll read it again. One of the greatest resources available to the government is a sheer amount of land available as a public asset, which we can sell on parcels to well and corporate business looking to participate in public construction and industrial development projects. 
There's far more land the government can feasibly develop on its own, but the private sector can certainly provide a helping hand for a price. How we have no interest in free for all bidding for war that'll lock out the general public from enjoying the fruits of city development? Well, five companies have bid on sets of contracts for public private partnership projects. Well, this will likely be a less rapid way to raise funds for the government, but at least we can redirect the flow of investment and project practices to reduce any harm to the local Chinese and Zhujian populaces. And of course, more uh, a minimum and maximum product interest. Well, natural solvency and liquidity ordinance. Well, the chief executive might have the authority to dispose of some public amount of lands as he sees fit. So there'll be a solution on the margins. Any plans to solicit private buildings for large tracts of undeveloped public lands will need to be authorized by the legislative council, if only for the sake of avoiding the inevitable acquisitions of corruption and conflict of interest. We'll thus seek the legislative council's approval to create an annual uh, schedule of private lands to be put up for the auction in the private sector, as a way of ensuring transparency and keeping the potential participants in the know. Surely, nobody objects to how we raise money for the state, especially if the state assets are being parceled off to willing private buyers. Part 46, or part 2, 1946. <clears throat> Are we doing anything here? No? Hmm. Seems like we really could be. Honestly, I might extend this down here a little bit more. Just so we can start like going here and then maybe go there. Lunch break. A quarter pack of cigarettes spent watching the ships and port shorty sail away from into the distance. Their hull is disappearing before the stern. That was a sunny day. It had been for four months since Lamb had left the village and yet to the porter. The bus of Hong Kong was still a sight. The hot landward wind brushed past his hair as he watched the city go beneath the par parapet of the hotel's roof. Here's someone who scraped the concrete behind him and saw the Ah, saw Ah Tan behind him. Shift's back on, Ah Tan said, face to a pan before breaking into a smile. Just kidding. Still half an hour yet? He slinked next to set Lamb, leaning on the parapet, so getting used to the city. Yeah, Lamb let out a furtive sigh. Cigarette, he held out his pack to Tan, who helped, took one. Lamb uh, <clears throat> lit both cigarettes as they watched the white smoke congeal with the atmosphere in the city. Heard any news from your folks back home? Got word from my girlfriend, Tan said, greeting slightly. She's getting by. Father's doing back breaking work down the farm, and mother's will. Oh, uh, well, he's, uh, mother's mother. He why did you come over here anyway? Lamb took a long drag off a cigarette. Seems like you got a lot going on. Tan smiley, ri smiled wryly. That's between me and myself. Fair and you? Lamb gave the question some thought. <coughs> Been asking myself the same thing. He looked down in the street below as pedestrians walking down the avenues like little ants. Uh, plying from one end of the city to the other. Make a name out here and all, I, I suppose. He put the butt of a cigarette beneath the heel of the shoe and ground it out. Flickers of amber escaped. Half an hour out yet, he said, pulling another cigarette from the pack. You and me, we could smoke a lot, probably. But in the meantime, uh, right now, we actually have enough seats. We have 56, which is actually really great. And we're going to sell to the Zhujin, which is going to be great. So it gives us more admin efficiency. Increases missileless income by 0.3 billion. Increases liquid reserves by 0.55 billion. Increases uh, generally with the amendment. It gives us more miscellaneous income. Everyone say it gets more Zhujin government support, but less Japanese expat support. And we can already sell it, sell it or do it, which is great. Also, we did not do... I ultimately decided to not do the approval from... Um, Japan right now, meeting the representatives as, from Japan or China, just because I did both off screen, and they both gave us penalties for the most part. So I'm like, nah, I'm okay. And now we're going to start focusing a little bit more on trying to get some more presence here. So we're going to work on Chokai from here on out, and we can reinforce, the, reinforce these guys. Um, we do want to keep at least some political power to get ready for the next year as well, but I don't want to uh, decrease Chinese support. I really want to decrease the uh, Kenpai Tai support, actually. We're actually relatively close. Kenpai Tai support. Order Crackdown decreases the support, decreases the support. Um, so, raid their bases, decrease the Yakuza support, which is not going to really help us out, decrease Chinese government support, decrease government police support, that's replacing one master with another, and that requires uh, stuff there, uh, decreases Japanese expat support, eh, it's not really worth it, not really, we'll do that one, now we're going to go start increasing support here too, but we got some, like I said, some comments to go through, how are we doing over here, doing okay, doing okay, you guys are taking a while to get down there. New auction plan! Lam Hao, Hao Sun was on his regular beat through the streets of Koshu, but this time it was somewhat different. In a conversation that was generally worth sticking around and listening to, a group of Zhujin were having a conversation about the chief executive Marita's most recent decision. Did you hear they're going to be auctioning off assets from the Yusuri Mess? What, they're going to sell? Literally everything! Machinery, seizes property, furniture, and get this, they'll be looking for us in particular, us Zhujin! What, really? Do the Japanese really? Th what did the Japanese think about it? Oh, the usual rubbish. They won't be participating. In fact, they're mad as all heck. They'll, they'll be being allowed to join in. Best not tell our scum employees or employers about it, or they'll be angrier than 50 of those only their funny pictures talk about. Like 200 of them. If we manage to start a business on the cheap under their noses, uh, the Zuzhin lost her minds laughing at that prospect. As the Zuzhin moved on to talk about different matters, Lam took a note of what he just heard and continued, concluded that was most an interesting development. He wondered what else Marita had up his sleeve and plumbing in the tax system. The tax system was plagued by exceptions, loopholes, and underreporting, and we could do well to plug with these leaks. Codifying arrangements to quickly solve investment and solvent companies, and an auction off state lands will only be viable for so long in the good times. Uh, the number of bankruptcies will fall, eventually we'll be selling all of our unneeded land. For Guangdong to truly stand on its own, we must take a deep look at this tax system. Even in doing so, it would upset the corporate and Japanese pillars of our economy. It's the only feasible way we can keep our, the, 
uh, we can grow our recurring revenue streams, and the keeper government will float in the time frame necessary to support Morita and these other objectives. Kickbacks for our backers. Uh, where's our guys? Morita rubbed his temples, considering the problem before him. It was an unforgivable reality that not that not all or even most of the illustrated council members along with Sunny Chung Kong shared his and Lee's vision for a better Guangdong. Can you do well here? What the heck? Give me a second here. They were just opportunities, or opportunists like the rest, and aligned with Murray's faction because they had to align with somebody. That meant their support for each other for each particular form he proposed could be guaranteed, particularly if they felt that it didn't obviously advance their interests, so it was unfortunate the case with the current proposal, so Murray was left with a choice. He gave him Bell some kickbacks to the firms aligned with his faction under the legislation, thereby giving his more opportunistic backers a clear self-interest reason to vote for it, but that would mean seeking to the level of naked corruption. That was the Norman Guangdong, of course, but he was supposed to be fixing it, not participating himself, on the other hand. Maybe the only way to pass his agenda and actually succeed in reforming the system. I've been see Sony plus CK kickbacks. Building kickbacks for Sony and Chung Kong. Uh, as amendment. Well, I mean, right now, we have 56, so we're actually pretty good. We got 3 seats, 5 seats, 13 seats, so we don't need. We're not going to sink to their level. Matsushita's backing. Matsushita leaned back in his chair, of course. I can certainly get the votes you need, I just need some help from you in exchange. Uh, on the other side of the desk, Marita Nero desires what sort of help? Matsushita smiled. Well, a new product cycle is approaching. It would be very helpful if Matsushita Electric could have the first priority for patent approval and safety inspections. I'm not asking for anything unto untoward. Just for the bureaucracy to run efficiency is a smile item for us. Uh, ooh, investigate Lego members. Oh, yes, please. Marita concluded, uh, or considered it. It was true that there was nothing illegal about the proposal, but uh, it would uh, certainly give Matsushita an unfair anti-competitive advantage to get his products for the year on the market before everyone else. You've got a deal. Grand kickbacks. Spend money, money. Nope. Carillion War, huh? Even though this kind of sucks right now, we're still getting the objectives done. That's what matters the most. I guess we're still over here too, huh? Nice. You're dying over there, that crazy boy, whatever. So now, where are we at? Uh, oh, wow. We're done with the river crossings. And all sorts of stuff like that. Um, mountainous operations. Let's see how well we can do. It's not looking very good for our guys. At the margins, any businessman knows that one has to spend money to make money, but not when their money is taken away from someone else's game. None of the programs we've laid out on our policy addresses the funds will fund themselves, at Kale. At least they plaintively. If we can't raise money for the public purse, then we'll have to ask investors, and they'll give us an even harder time than the Legislative Council. I think Ibuka and Komai's men will give them a run for their money, Morita threw his war notebook under the desk with a thub. The pages filled to the brim with the names and phone numbers of all 100 Lego members. They're not going to give us all the time of the day. What do we even bother for? Because I'd rather try to convince one out of 100 people than 10 out of 1,000. Lee Hammer at his point at him. Underlying several names on a chaos discard notebook, the marginal gain from even one person changing their mind is too big to pass up. Morita chewed on the end of his pencil, trying to remember anything irrelevant about the names Lee had underlined. All Fujitsu and Hitachi men. Yes, they were all colleagues in the Legco, but since when have, uh, could, could uh, collegiality matter between business and competitors? If we can't get Fujitsu or Hitachi support the regular way. <coughs> nope. We're good. 70% is not good enough, though. We literally still just cannot win there, huh? Like, bruh. Oh, now we're getting attacked. Passage of the Financial Solvency and Liquidity Ordinance. Unusually for the Legislative Council to ban that date's proposal of the Financial Solvency and Liquidity Ordinance, well, it's focus, completely focused on numbers, technicalities, and er possible errors in text. Therefore, like anything that less care, the slightest semblance of the drama, and even Moritz's rivalry book had remained more or less silent. That made good sense, Moritz thought. After all, they needed to build up a better heuristic whereby the future insolvencies left in the care of the state of Guangdong could be permanently taken care of, thereby also formalizing the recent auctions in a fully official process. Struck most of the councilmen is a very good idea. That too was lo logical since nobody said there's anything from it. It was good for the business, good for the government, and good for the various local members' own mercantile ambitions. Though the tycoons that led the first pickings of the student carcass, that would by no means be the case next time around. As the Lekko passed the ordinance by a massive margin, they joined in courteous applause. Murita stood about respectfully, if only every session were this easy. Great! Product cycle still pretty good. Transition state apparatus. The finest money can buy for now. Anything else? Nope. So, new pipes of revenue. There's now enough to fix the plumbing. We need new pipes. That means new taxes. For the good of good, is soon in Chung Kong will it. 
Just national tax rationalization ordinance. Um, 33 seats. Decreases Japanese expat support. More income than business taxes. Sealing the cracks. Raising taxes would raise alarms from the investor community, threatening a loss of confidence. Rather, we plug the leaks and rely on our economic growth to do the rest. Financial supervision and regulation ordinance. Increase liquid reserves. Raise taxes on the states on upper class homeowners. Tax relief for lower income. Reduce tax burden on income tax. Which doesn't look bad at all for us. Increases government support. I like that. Tax rationalization ordinance or seal of cracks. Unleash the watchdogs and investigates whatever arrivals in the legislative council for tax evasion. Increases chance of opinion though. Ab efficiency slowly increases. Amnesty for repayment. Arrivals will pay us off in exchange for not being investigated. Increases our arrival support of the ordinance. Uh I don't like that one. 43. This is 33. This is difficult to pass. <coughs> you can raise taxes 10% of the current seats. 10%, 10%. That's still not enough. 10%? That's not very much. Tax relief for the lower income. I kind of like this one. Hmm. New pipes. New pipes of revenue. Sealing the cracks. Related on some investor community, which is true. Better that we plug the leak and rely on economic growth to do the rest. We need new pipes. We really do need to do new taxes. So let's go with this one, I guess. Um, simply fill in the gaps in the current tax system will not be enough to fund the programs we need to turn Guangdong into something that resembles a home for its people. Approach the issue of tax reform by expressively widening the tax base, even if it means that will anger corporate donors, wealthy Japanese, the Zuzi business, or the Chinese masses. They will understand in time, but we do that for the well, good of all. Uh, it's a price we must pay to live in something that resembles a civilized society. God, I hate taxes. We'll try it, but there's no guarantee that we'll do well, of course. But we'll do the best we can. Uh, we need 30 billion? Well, we're past 31 billion, which is actually really good. Oh, wow, we're not doing well here, huh? 151. Purge corrupt officials. Yeah, we'll do that one next. That'll be very good. We're looking very good for this. We need to use equipment as part of a battle plan, though. No. Recall 1955, October. We acknowledge the veracity of the Fujitsu's claim. The TR-56 is a substantial copy of Fujitsu technology and, we, and what we have drawn. We regret that as a result, the Sonus L. A. Lee electronic company can no longer remain a going concern and will cease operation. Murder to finish a uh, prepared statement, blinking firstly against a barrage of camera flashes next to him, Lee Kashin. Student lowered his head, a word of those apologies that left their actual thoughts unsaid. <coughs> they would lose everything again, done in a vengeful... Done in by eventual Ibuka, who had spared no expense fighting a ruinous lawsuit. They could complain all they wanted about the court's bias against the Chinese company or the harassment Fujitsu had conducted against their stores and suppliers. Fujitsu was still the last one standing. If there was any silver lining, it was that the room was as crowded as it was. Muji and Li had fought bitterly end to the final hour, with their eyes of all Guangdong upon them as they just had they planned. The two accepted no questions as they left the press conference, even as the reporters cried out for President Li to comment on this uh, chaotic struggle. We're not done yet. Outside, Stanley Ho and bundled uh, Marita and Lee into a waiting vehicle, which sped into Hong Kong's traffic. We'll change vehicles and we'll get you to a safe house. How much is left for Fujitsu? Lee asked, squeezed against Marita in the backseat foot well. Nothing important, Stanley laughed before expression hardened, but we better hope our shreds made us enough friends to keep us safe. Fujitsu could still collect us if they get, get their hands on us. I'm doing the battle plan, but it's not going up at all, which I don't understand. This is the battle plan, right? Defensive line. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Sorrow and reunion. Suspended. 
Oh, actually, let's go there. Upon the backdrop of the Cal Caligonius, the night sky was a serene moon. Its ethereal form and loose and beams of bright silver light dangling above people thousands of miles apart, and its luster seemed refreshed from the coming of a new year. Exuberantly celebrated, oh, look at that, uh, by the people across Asia, the moon observed the reunion of families, the ebullient and vivacious celebrations filled with euphoria, yet despite the name, the same moon towering above the work houses and factors of Guangdong, the merry atmosphere was noticeably yeah, silent. Yang uh, Lok Chi sat in his subsidized apartment building, and in front of a desk upon which resided an empty piece of paper intended to be a letter to his mother explaining his absence during the Chinese New Year. He had just finished another tiring shift at his place of employment at a Matsushita factory dedicated to producing consumer electronics, as work hours increased due to the elevated demand of the New Year's period. Thoughts raced uh, through his mind as he contemplated justification and explanations for not being besides the person that had raised him, that had fed and nurtured him, that he had recited to, to him pieces of eloquent poetry when he was young. He put his pen to the paper and began writing. Words appeared describing his struggles and experiences, the sacrifices he had to make to sustain his family, and his everlasting gratitude for his mother. Yang stopped for a short interval all the time and deliberated once more. He wanted to pr promise to be there next year, but in his mind it was clear that he simply could not afford to. The wages he would be missing would be too detrimental. At this he could only sigh. He peered out of the small round window beside him towards the elegant moon in the night sky, his mind jumping to a line from an old poem his mother had once recited to him. A line that could comfort both himself and his mother. Though thousands of miles apart, we are still able to share the beauty of the same moon together. I wish you the best of health. Yang Lok Chi. The matter of taxation. Murida Kao was uh, seeing another lively uh, cabinet discussion between Yasu uh, Shita, Masaharu, and Stanley Ho. The matter at hand this time was how about to make an improvement to Guangdong's finances of the sort that successfully outlasted the Morita administry. It was particularly depressing in light of the expected financial burden of the Morita government's four forms. Ho has always made the first argument. If we really want to go ahead with their plans, Chief Executive, if we're, if we're not talking, uh, no, if we're all talking, talking no bite. We need a stable base of new revenue. Do you know what that means? It means adjusting taxes take from where there is wealth and it's enabling those well off to spend more. It'll be easier to also tax than relying on minuscule incomes. At this, Matsushita scoffed. This time, Mr. Ho is really taking, talking nonsense. Let's be real, Chief Executive. How do you expect the Legislative Council to just bend over, accept plans to tax and spend? Even if you pinch money from the pockets of the working class, you claim to help? No, we don't need any cockeyed innovations like that. Better is just enforce existing laws, which will also level the corporate playing field. Murder reflected on the matter at hand. Once again, he realized that Ho and Matsushita both made good points, and he would have to uh, think about it carefully. The decision was his, as it always had been. <coughs> Tax relief really for the lower income. Door critics, yes. Chief Executive Morita plans cut income taxes for the poor. They don't make enough in most cases to be taxed anyway, and the visits from a tax collector often collects nothing but resentment and nothing else. But everyone needs to spend to eat, to buy clothing, to buy amenities, and buy the odd luxury for, or two. To be absolutely clear, we will not tax incomes. We do not believe in depriving the populace of the means to survive, but we will tax spending at a lower rate than what we would tax our income, but tax nonetheless. No doubt prove more stable a source of income to the government than increasing the government's cut of a fluctuating wage bill. Forgotten it, but not alone. Cam Shun. Try not to groan as usual year and motivational slogans materialize on the billboards and factory walls in a city, of course. <clears throat> Productivity is a sort of labor towards the greater heights of the new year. Together for the future Guangdong, all of the written Chinese as opposed to the usual Japanese. <coughs> now to have struck home, though, the government. Chief Executive Morita and his lackey, Li Keqing, met well, or as any Japanese stooge might, but intentions were not enough, of course. But not for the man whose hand was mulching into, into a pulp at a dodgy factory, Kam Shun, who had been fired for daring to report the incident. Kam Shun fumed as he walked past the slogans, but few others seemed to pay them any heed. Not the same kind of cynical weariness as before, but the casual difference. Worried more about how to use a bag of Chung Kong groceries. Less trends in studying hardware, how to use a long overdue leave. It wanted to scream, didn't they see nothing had changed? How they sleepwalked in the dreams of monstrous men. The most prominent Chinese in Zhujin event went to Koshu and parlayed the chief executive's court. Prostrated themselves for scraps and from the Japanese, but in the face of full bellies and a modicum of dignity, he had been ignored, left to wander alone till he joined the committee. The Chinese who still remember the truth, as occluded as it was by honey words and half-hearted promises, reached out to each other. They included wild Bukharanists, unreconstituted nationalists, dreaming of an unfinished revolution, or those like Kam Shun, who simply saw the system for what it was. It didn't matter. They knew they were not alone, even as Sony Chong seemed to forget their existence. The community of Chinese labor would protect them, of course. Corruption. We want to save some stuff for the future too. Um, we can do that one too. Why not? Adds a little bit more to the depth, but whatever. Ladder plans, force attack. Yeah, I probably not gonna do that. Why at least twice? So that'll be good. Only 8% growth. Gosh. Terrible, I know. Inflation's going up to 2, which is not good. Either.
Give me a Mountaineer, though. We are slowly losing like crazy here. Ah, oh, so there's a group so like churn, so that sucks. As a military coward can play and touch down the rain at the base. In the rain at the base. PTRG signed as a military personnel to play in the wet human night. The former push <clears throat> around boxes worth of combat data. Intelligence uh, gained from the most recent deployment of the PTRG battalions, eager to discuss improvements and changes that need to be made to the weapons that they've been observing. The key reports that our superiors will spend sleepless nights stitching through, making sure that every product that comes out of Guangdong's weapon development labs is not failed by any and every metric, unless they won't be replaced. That data will be processed, with some of it being thrown out as useless and other bits being processed as a gold standard. As the data is loaded on other vans, they disappear in the neon cityscape that, do that dominates the Guangdong's night. The latter stand in the rain, awaiting orders from their commanders to return to the barracks. They unload dozens of wooden coffins containing their fallen comrades, of course, and soak flags covering them, a little, offering little protection against the rain. There are no thanks, no reward for having been the guinea pigs and the lab rats for collecting the aforementioned data. Survivors know that at the next conflict breaks, we'll be sent to another foreign land to test equipment that was likely to do malfunction, and blow up in the face by commanders. Same ones who watched his entire company torn apart in order to see Guang Dong's novel equipment could pass their high standards. Both groups return back to the daily source, or daily duties, knowing that they would meet on the same airfield again at some point in the future. Back to normal Guang Dong, this we got one more seat. I don't understand how we didn't do the battle plan one, though. Like, what the heck? I guess, was that not the battle plan? Am I being dumb? I might be being dumb. 1947, war in China's over. So the newspapers have said in bold print. The day off saw some of our lamb dash towards the docks in pursuit of a luck that he thought it would never come. He rushed towards the post office moored on the side of the warehouse down by the pier. The smell of sea brine followed him aside, furtively. <clears throat> he approached the counter where the usual clerk sat behind a screen. So hey, he said, coughing, any news today? The habitually ex exasperated clerk looked up from her work and gave him a wry smi sly smile. In that instant, she was almost beautiful. Actually, yes, she lifted a briefcase from, briefcase from underneath her with a few documents and a letter signed here and here. <coughs> a few pen strokes later, Lamb ran and ran, joy bounding in his every leap. Breathlessly, he shut the door of his room and all but tore the envelope where the letter resided. With a smile on his face, Lamb sat down to read. I'm sorry, Red. I hope this letter reaches you in good health. How's Hong Kong? I heard it must be left uh, rough living there as a porter. The brief guest that comes with this letter ought to contain some money for you to start a new life there. When you see your mother, please tell her that I cannot shirk my duty in America. If you don't hear from me again, don't worry. Since it's really yours. That, light, that night, Lamb walked by the piers again, Alcos slicking his feelings. The road was his. He had made it. He held back an urge to shout. Instead, he drew one cigarette from his breast pocket and lit it, dragging it for a long while. The next year's held so much promise. Lam Hyun Soon did not think that he could fail. We were all brave once in the 1967 uh, Economic Review. Uh, yeah, I've read this one before, so I've read this like, several times already. So if you want to read this again, please go ahead. Here's three more seats. Jesus Christ, that's so good. We need 35 billion. I think we might be able to make it. Nice. Oh, we can do this one too. I want to wait because it is February. We get, gotta get ready for the next product cycle. But we're doing okay. We're actually 56% support, which is pretty good. We get more assimilation rate between the Chinese and Zhujin. More growth, less monthly corruption. I know this is not great over here, but we only have 41%, but we're, we're, we're getting there. This is already 80%. We're looking pretty decent now. 98 days. It's not bad. Petty corruption. Not great, of course. But new pots of revenue, please. It's actually for the lower income. God, this is so bad. Could you, like, take them all out here and just destroy them? You might be able to, actually. All right, so right now, where are we at? It looks like pretty bad, right? We have only 36 East. Jesus Christ, that's so bad. So we do this to get more money. Sales tax. At 20% of Chung Kong seats and 15 of Sony. So five, at least five here. And and what is this? It says 15%. So like maybe three or four more seats. Still not enough. We might be corrupt. But I don't want to be corrupt. Well, we actually might need to save the political power to be corrupt then. God dang it. Well, we'll see. <coughs> yeah, where are we at? Let's go and start doing this too. We'll get the Chung Kong seats too. It's good, with more corruption, but whatever. If you want to know about advancements in household household electronics, please go right ahead. I should get more electronics, but then again, I don't have a lot of money. I owe the government a lot of money. I don't like the government. Anyways, um, ninety-one percent. That's not bad. More research, good. I like it. Because we're spending so much on the military, a whole point zero three billion. Sixteen billion, not bad. It's really not bad at all. So where are we at now? Thirty-eight seats. Chung Kong. Oh, actually, we should have done that one. We should have just done uh, some of these instead. No more corruption, so be it. Whatever. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I should have not done those UCs. My bad. Crap. Tax rationalization ordinance. 
Any permanent changes to Guangdong's tax laws and any hope of actually getting a broad swath of Guangdong society to agree to pay rests on our ability to pass through the proposed raft of tax legislation to the Legislative Council. Nobody expects the vote to be easy, no one likes paying the tax men or corporate enemies seemingly less so, but we must not stop here. The challengers. As Damocles was still memorably shown by the Dionysus of Syracuse, powers are secure. Oh, crap. Are you kidding me? Uh, if you want to do this again, please go right ahead. Uh, so I've read this before, I'm pretty sure, so. Frick. That's all I'm going to say. We have 46. We need four more seats. Three more Sony seats, huh? Some relief at last. You know, we might just be able to get that. Uh, doing this one would be good as well. Uh, Li Chun, coming from his home job, found his parents, Liang and May, pouring over the family budget. They looked up and smiled and greeting before going back to work. However, Chun had something important to say. Did you hear from Mom, Dad? They're cutting taxes on income for most of us, except for the wealthy fat cats up downtown. I'll have to have more money to put for ourselves, or even better, safer why and hay. Liang nodded. I heard it's a darn good development, but May sighed. Her husband and her son looked at her in some concern. She elaborated on her point. We'll have more money, and that's well and good, but we still need to make sure that we have all something to eat. And of course, there's a matter of getting more clothes for us to wear. I also heard something that you might not have heard about yet. What's that? Well, the companies are planning to raise prices to adjust for the reduced taxes, which means the government is probably still going to get, uh, get its cut. At this, Leong and Chung's enthusiasm was dampered. But they're all didn't entirely die out. After all, everyone, every end still mattered, and even if they weren't able to get as much as they wanted, the Lee family would still probably have room for some nice things here and there once in a while. Their walls would certainly be heavy regardless. Um, did I read this before? I'm, I probably did. So if I read this again, please go ahead. I, don't, I hate increasing corruption. I don't want any more corruption, but we kind of have to do it. Oh, 16 days left. I don't. I don't want to like water down anything. We need three more seats, which is kind of ridiculous. <coughs> but happy June, everybody. I think the next one we might just have to water stuff down. This is going to be kind of insane. To try to water it down some more. Seems from the underworld. What? Uh, have I heard this before? I think I heard this before. So if you're doing this again, please go ahead. Haruku in Peru. That's getting dangerously high. I think I'll go back and actually edit it. So maybe we will water it down. Maybe we will. It's becoming a Panzer later too. Still, which is good, but... I wish AI would do something here. More research would be nice. Peace conference? Is it for Russia? It might be for Russia. Or maybe the West African conflict. Oh, nope, it's for Germany. Well, we're going to try to root out corruption. They're probably releasing somebody, too. Extra rationalization. Fresh faces. It seems contradictory, doesn't it? How does the civil service designed to service people become such a stain burned upon by those very same people? The commissioner shrugged his shoulders. If I knew my job would be void, wouldn't it? If I can if I can't understand the beginnings of her failings, well then I at least can try to understand how I can fix them. He paused for a moment, looking from left to right over his assembled team of police officers. We become an organization that treats the bad like royalty and the good like criminals. I want you all to know that this is the mindset of the past. I want you all to know that the competent, the brave, and the daring among you that will be rewarded. He paused for another moment, briefly making eye contact with Lamb, and I want the imposters among us to know I'm watching. Newly appointed police uh, commissioner Omori Khan uttered inspired, inspired utter silence from the officers. For Lamb, it wasn't difficult to imagine that some of his colleagues feared the man. Whether they were suspect or not, chatter began to slowly pick up as Omori left the room, which seemed to be the commissioner's informal dismissal of the simple subordinates. Some of the officers left behind Omori, most likely to return to duty, but most of the rest, but among the rest of the officers was an area of excitement. The younger officers seemed to be the most jubilant, and even some of the seniors that had served even before Lamb's arrival appeared happy with the removal of the old commissioner. Change is coming was a phrase passed around more than a few times, especially by certain Zong man, his face as fresh as Omori's. Lamb grabbed Zong, pulling him to his side. The man reminded Lamb of himself. The attitude he possessed was refreshing. I never asked Zong, but why did you join the force? The man smiled at Lamb, answering the most common phrase he ever heard in, his o heard in the office. Support myself and my family. Really. We can get more votes too. I had one more Sony seat. We're still for oh, we're 40, 48 though. We have a lot of corruption here. We're gonna hit. We're gonna definitely hit 60, and then we're gonna do reforms. God dang it! The place promised in our early days. 
Yamachi Hiroshi, learning down the metal railings of a perch atop this Nintendo factory, gazing upon the dozens of workers at their stations, diligently crafting and assembling Nintendo's products. The sound of the thick sheets of paper being methodically cut into card sized pieces filled the room as industrious workers, men, women, and Chinese and Japanese alike, operated the sick machines and gave Nintendo Sam Fuda cards of their striking designs and flowing bowling colors. Yamachi stared in awe of the factory floor, admiring the streamlined processes of the machines and studiousness of the workers. He got so far from sifting through the mounds of financial paperwork, trying to salvage Nintendo and subsidizing off meager yet exorbitantly priced instant rice. Numbers approved it too. He matched stopped to examine the clipboards he held in sands and increasing not only the profits but also productivity Nintendo that the financial report stated was glaringly obvious to him. But he put it down once more and went back to the gazing of the factory, reminiscing of the time he listened to Chief Executive Morita's inauguration speech in that old cramped office of his. He regarded having dismissed Morita's promises as naivety and contemplating the integrity of his character as a soft sunlight illuminated the factory floor, just as it did to his desk all those years ago. He remembered scoffing at the idea of having merits over race, and having Japanese and Chinese workers being treated equally as he glanced upon his employees in a graceful harmony. He doubted Morita was sincere and wondered if his promises were just fake as soon as early radios, but Morita's message still resonated with him even in the face of his cynicism. As the bell rang out through the factory floor signaling a break for the workers, a single thought drowning out all the memories he had, had of listening to Morita's speech. On those now distant days, he made a promise he could keep. Kick back to our backers. Um, well, at this point, we can't see the level. 6%, even less political power. Monthly transport goes even further down. God dang it. We need one more. I'm going to do it. Now we're going to really focus on corruption. But then I say we're going to focus on corruption, but we can't focus on corruption because much siege is backing. Uh, Amatsu Shita leaned back in his chair. I can certainly get you the books you need. I just need some help from you to exchange. On the other side of the desk, Marita narrowed his eyes. What sort of help? Amatsu Shita smiled. Well, a new product cycle is approaching. It would be very helpful if we could have the first priority. I heard this earlier, too, so. You've got a deal. Nope. Fiscal independence. May The work may be thankless and tiring, but it's done. Guangdong's revenue system has been entirely revamped and rebuilt from the ground up to provide a tax base that can support a vision of the state. Not a simple care ticket for a corporate large guest, but as a provider of much needed public services within the framework of Guangdong's capitalist economy. Um, uh, nobody likes paying more than uh, to the authorities, of course, but we can hope that the chief executive Marita's plans for the economy and social issues can convince the populace that's, that's all worth this. Decrease inflation. Uh, we don't need to support every vote matters. Nope. I'm going to do this one immediately as fast as we can. Because we have the votes. And we're good with the votes. 1941. Oh, 1941. 1949, part one. Daily routine. Lam woke up at 6 in the morning every day, always early to work. With his father's <clears throat> money, he rented a small office in Kowloon, setting up a small silk firm there. Their niche, tailoring equipment, and lots of it. The silk trade had not halted. In the shadow of Japanese victory, instead of boom, rocked the, rocked the province of Guangdong as Japanese investors flocked to end capitalize on the silk trade. After breakfast of porridge and salted fish, he went on to his firm to talk with his clients and tour the mulberry fields just to upside the countryside from Hong Kong. <coughs> on this occasion, it was another midday summer. The silkworms were busy at work, aside of those stems that were the where the berries grew. Pale silk moths fluttered between the rows of neatly planted trees whose trunks stalked the sun and struck shadows. A few of Lam's friends explained to the besuited Japanese men in the history of the silk trade, its origins during the dynastic eras, and Lam's history with it all. He remained quiet, though he was better Japanese than he used to be, he still could not speak it fluently. In those days, he carried a gun with him. A discreet arm surplus Nambu was a trusted companion on the road roads out of the Three Pearls. The new Republic of China's army was still in its infancy, small and incompetent at best. And he would fire a lot of the time, pointing at a prospective bandit who would back off. If that didn't work, then he'd fire in the air. He seen half a dozen men split up with that, this approach. He'd come home around 7 in the evening, just in time to put his feet up and read. Lamp thought of the phrase that eluded his mind time and time again. The blue seas turned into mulberry fields. We're going to lose this division. We'll probably kill it off, honestly. Revolutionary victory in Colombia. Oh, that sucks for them. Passage of the National Tax Reorganization or Rationalization Ordinance. The new ordinance was considered in the Legislative Council of Guangdong was not debated. No, it was vigorously argued over, to the point where people were genuinely concerned that the actual fights would break out. The violent, almost barbaric argument began in an angry forte of near primal rage and reached a terrible crescendo by the time the votes were counted. The measure having reached a majority, and I announced that it has passed. With those words, the chamber erupted with the sounds of anger, despair, and confusion. Many of the new delegates knew very well that they were going to be impacted by the tax measures passed by Marita Akeo and Li Kaxing. They tried hard and failed to prevent them from going through now, and now they're going to be, they were beyond outraged. Not least among them was Ibuka Masaru, who let, uh, let loose with his wrath at Li and Morita. You dudes, don't you know what you're going to do to the entire invention? To the engine of invention, that is, a companies, you good for nothing, bleeding heart imbeciles. Next in, the silently fuming Kamai was consuming the Oni's rage. He'd moved Hitachi here to build a mentor in an industrial paradise with less taxes than in Manchuko, yet here the state factory. I managed to make it so he'd have to pay more taxes and be prevented from reaching his dreams of true efficiency. It ground his gears beyond relief. Marita Kao looked at all this, nodding his head in satisfaction and left. His work was done for now. Income taxes would go down by 2.5%. Yeah, 
Even though they'll increase by 200%. We need to get more business taxes. I wish these guys would actually support the attack. Like, you are wasting time here. Now, who's this? Oh. Begin the 1967 product cycle. We've got to cut corrupt. I've got to cut corruption. So we've been. Let's see, 8%. 10% and 10%. 1040. Oh, we're not going to do well here. Oh, we did the Italian market. Iberia, Turkish. Let's go to Turkey. Let's try trucks. And we start off with 40 in terrible quality, though. Headphones, huh? Above average, 130% is pretty decent, though. God, I just don't have, ever have enough political power. Well, since we're here, anyways. That sport artillery is very nice. <coughs> and a better arty. So why not? Oh, we have more production units, huh? There you go. Nice. Did that. Well, I didn't say which one, which way we were going to go earlier, but I guess it's now all better than ever. Um, I asked you last time whether we should do buying data in AD versus safety first. And the time it's recording it around 11.31 at night... There's more support for buying dignity. So there's a little bit more support. But I also ask you whether there's more support for the bodies we see and the air we breathe. And right now there's a little bit more support for the air we breathe. So we're going to go with the air we breathe and we're going to go with the buying dignity next. Um, we have only 44 seats. Uh, oh, we might do the air we breathe first. Yeah, I'll probably do this one just because we can actually pass it. There we breathe. There's no wonder why the workers are often distracted from their tasks. How can everyone be expected to focus when they're busy coughing up an oxygen fumes drifting over from the factories in the Pearl River, spitting up tainted water from that very same body of water polluted by those very same factories? Distracting people with short lifespans, bringing less profit, therefore, instead of trying to convince other corporations to treat the symptoms of despair, we'll get them to agree to an easier, more effective solution of treating the problem at its source. Why not? Right, so since we're here, 12.5% uh, versus this much 10%, we're going to come up here first. And... Yes. 12.5%, we're going to do this one next to you. Uh, no more profits, god dang it. That sucks. Only 11%, come on, man. 1.1, 25%, come on. Breakthrough organization. Yeah, this is definitely good to do. Not, th not this one, this one. Looking good on supply. And just a little more. Fiscal independence attained. It was a pleasant day, of course. <coughs> in the government district of Koshu, and the four top men of the Marita government of Guangdong breathed a sigh of relief and clean cups of coffee to sat down to eat lunch. All the initiatives have passed, which are the two major positive consequences. First, Guangdong was fiscally independent for the first time in its history. Second, the state had all the financial backing needed to bring about any program or plan it wanted to execute. As a result of this, Marita Kao, Li Kaxing, and Stanley Ho were all understandably pleased uh, as punch. What might have surprised an onlooker was that Masashida Masaharu was smiling just as wild as the three more reformist colleagues. But a person who must have cheated well would know that he was happy for two reasons. But one reason was that being one of Morita's ministers came with the perks such as selective enforcement. The other was that Morita was more than content to give his external secretary some leeway if it meant pulling Komai in, in. And in particular, he broke down one or five or ten pegs. On the other hand, Ho was always happy that the government would finally have the money needed to implement some of Lee's most ambitious programs before they dug into their bento boxes. Also, she just stared right into his face for a brief moment to remind them of one important thing, that though financial independence was still well and good, the economy still needed to keep growing. After all, he said a growing pie helps everyone. At that, they nodded and dug in. Purify water controls. Reduces a little bit of support. Which is not good. Smoke stacks as well. Mm, Chris Chan's opinion. Water pur purity control. Countless pollutants are being unnecessarily dumped in the upstream of the Pearl River, but in without any regard for the residents downstream. With this in mind, it should come as no surprise that the waterborne illnesses and toxic contamination are shockingly common part of the lives of everyday people in the poorest regions of the Three Pearls. We will direct the corporations with state funds if needed to treat containments when it's possible and to safely dispose of them when it's not. Together, we'll clear the water table we, already, we all rely on of toxic elements so that we might all lead healthy lives. 10%. Yeah, I want to do that one next. That one's nice and all, but, like, this one's best. Canadian Centennial, huh? Because right now we're only at 35% and 40%, which is really bad. 
Where is left hand? Yeah, this is gonna be not a good one for us. Ugh. I mean, you just, you just do not have enough political power as this nation. No reinforcements. For, well, that's an issue with the game then. We should have more than enough supply here. So if you drive all the way down here, you should be fine, right? In theory, right? Yes, no. Um, after this one, I'm not gonna lower police presence anymore from here on out. Uh, yeah, I guess we might as well do this one. Here's interest a little more, perhaps. So that would be good overall. Koshu, unfiltered. Yoshiko opened the creaking door of her apartment to a whiff of sulfur smoke and an acrid sting in her nostrils. The factories had been running all night and the winds were blowing back towards Koshu, sending plumes of smog over the city. The weather report never mentioned these days, but residents learned to take precautions and Yoshiko hurriedly affixed a sky blue cloth mask to her face. Her commute was roughly half an hour, much of it to one of the city's many tram cars. Waiting in line, Yoshiko resisted the urge to cough as the exhaust of a passing car washed over her. Anyone anyway, know the means would drive to work, which only made things worse for her and the laborers behind her. A few gave in, uh, hacking noisy sputters of phlegm into their masks. A double-decker street tramp pulled up with a clang of a bell, and Yoshiko clambered on board, squeezing herself into the space remaining. The windows were sensibly kept shut, but this only treated the oppressive, cloying haze outside for the stale, sweaty hate of human bodies. Bend inside like animals. The mask, as flimsy as it was, cut out the worst of the stench. Her mini odyssey ended as a wave of chill, clean air washed over her, beyond the entrance of the Canton Fujin Koron's offices. Uh, Yoshiko idly considered her next words as she boiled filtered water into the break room for her morning tea, the only thing that erased the persistent scratching in her throat. Had the chief executive promised to do something, she sat at her desk, slipping her fingers beneath the strings behind her ears to remove her mask. Its surface was gritty, the blue tarnished by smoke and soot. But yeah, we're really not going to do very well here at all, in terms of this product cycle, which it just, it just, ugh, it's, a, it's a little aggravating, not going to lie. And we could you do this here too, but culmination. Oh, the creaking wheel cracks. Uh-oh. Oh, look at this. Paper had a remarkable ability to obscure, confuse, and obfuscate when deployed in a certain way. If used differently, it could be in line with clarifying sh and sharp. But if the paper could scream with joy, this paper was certainly would. The figures painted a beautiful picture of the growth and progress. Capping all off as a single page at the end of the report, containing a single graph, a simple one, GDP over time. One line inch upwards, the other starting from, from a further way below it, rocketed skywards. The two lines met just before the end of the graph. It was official. Guangdong's economy had outpaced that of Manchukuo. Murder we grinned as he saw up and handed it over to Lee and Stanley afterwards like it was a Toyota show and tell. Can you believe it, Maurice said it, and nobody in particular, leaning back in his chair, one day I'm broken, the next I'm the head of the fastest growing economy in the sphere. The invisible hand, Stanley replied, raising a glass of champagne and a mock toast. No, to think we came all this way just for our own companies, not to be overly sentimental, but it does seem like a long time ago. The new jewel of the sphere, Lee agreed, clinking glass with Stanley. I'll drink to that, so what's next for us? First Manchukuo, then the world? It's obvious, Marita said, leaning over the table towards them. We're making a new world here. A world for people like us, out of nothing and nobody. All the town and innovation floating around in the world, it's coming here. We've got the money, we've got everything we need. Stanley smiled and beckoned a waiter to fill his glass. I think that deserves another toast. The state of Guangdong cheers as the Empire materialized beneath us in sheer GDP. The gadgeteer Guangdong and Guangdong Superman have proven the versatility and excellence of humane capitalism. By leveraging the strength of the Zhujian and the Chinese, granting the following effects. Three more seats for Sony, one more seat for Hong Kong. 4% more increase in every own state for the Chinese, 6% for Zhujian, and 3% for the Japanese expat, and 10% increase from an opinion from China, and 5% from Japan. Oh boy. 5% from them, 10% more from them. They're capped at what? 83? Holy crap. That's pretty decent. But we're going to end the episode there, even though... It's very disappointing that the next thing we'll do here is not going to be as profitable, which oh, really freaking sucks. We marketed a tricky, but you know, I guess we can't be successful in everything we do. Just most things we do. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll do the best we can with everything else that we need to do as we fit, continue with the state of Guangdong. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and have a great more rest of your day.